hello. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, out of curiosity, did anyone hear about this project before? What Armory? Wow. <laughs> oh, OK, great. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. And OK, so what this project is about. Uh, the goal is basically to bring cycles and work in the same space, same workflow, and use that for creating real-time experiences. For this, we will uh, reflect a subset of Blender API that makes sense for real-time. Real so basically, if you know Python BPI, you will kind of know how to work with Armory because the data is more, more or less the same. And uh, also similar to cycles, the, the core of the, of the engine is uh, also independent. So we can take it, we can integrate it in other tools. I recently saw there was cycles implementation in uh, Cinema 4D. So potentially, we could, we could take this solution and apply it to other places. Mm. But what this project is not about is we don't want to fork Blender. Mm. Basically, it all works mostly like an add-on, and optionally, you can take the Blender version, which, which has the player built in, but it's, it's a separate player that does not interfere with like, the rest of the Blender. Mm, like it's, a, it's a single patch that you can apply to Blender, build it yourself if you want. The source is already up on GitHub. And yeah, this way, it's basically to fight fragmentation. We would not want multiple versions of Blender. And eventually, it will be a nightmare to keep that up. Also, what is kind of a challenge that some people think that this is a full cycles renderer in real time, which it cannot happen because uh, path tracing will always produce better uh, results. But what we do is we sacrifice some of the quality to shorten the render times. And uh, lastly, this is also not a PBR viewport for Blender, so there is no duplicate work going on because the the renderer is separate to keep things simple. And yeah. So this was probably, I've been working on this for maybe over, over two years. And everyone told me this was the yeah, dumbest idea ever because like building a full rendering engine and hoping for uh, like uh, getting a funding for it, getting it useful to people, and not just being a, um, a toy. So um, it needs to be a lot of better, not just, not just as good as other solutions. And that's where the Blender uh, come in. So number one is editing. This is uh, one of the first shots that I got from uh, August two years ago. Uh, everything really simple. It was basically just exporting the assets and 
uh, running the simple scene. And uh, thousands and thousands of hours of frustration and joy, but mostly frustration. We get to something like this. It's still not perfect, but... Uh, so what this brings us is that I don't think other tools have is a completely unified workflow when everyone works in the same space, everyone operates the same interface, you don't export anything, there is no new programs to learn for artists. Uh, there's also a huge Blender ecosystem and uh, if you already know the basic of Blender, you will have a very easy way of learning how to use Armory. More. And uh, like I said, the, the built-in player is a separate renderer, but to keep things running, running in synchronization, we send the messages between the two processes <coughs> where we listen to the operators from Python and we translate those operator operators to the armory. So if you move an object in Blender viewport, uh, the changes will reflect immediately in the player. And uh, if you import new new assets or do model changes, the changes will stream to the viewport while running. So to the user, it should feel like completely seamless experience. Yeah. Uh, to actually make it live, since it's a real-time renderer. Uh, it's recommended to use hacks, which I will explain later, but you can, uh, it is also possible to use Python. Not yet for all targets, but eventually it should be possible to use for all targets. Yeah, one more random screenshot. And uh, you can also use Java, JavaScript. And if you don't like coding at all, there are logic nodes, and they look just like you would expect from other. Mm. The, the thing that I did not anticipate before was that since this is running, running um, in, in the cycles mode, we can basically render the scene uh, in Armory and uh, sideways with cycles. And what this brings us is that we can compare these scenes and uh, basically see What's, what's wrong with the real-time renderer and very, very easily improve the output based on this. That I'm, I don't think there's a thing like this built in other tools, like out of the box. You can uh, align two viewports and you can see exactly what re reflections are of the lighting is bad. And uh, another advantage is that you can uh, render like you would do in-game with Armory, and you can render cutscenes with, I don't know, cycles. And you get much, much better realistic graphics in, in cutscenes. And eventually, it is, it's not yet possible, but uh, the goal is to take any cycle scene and render it in real time. But of course, it's reduced quality. 
So this is an example of uh, comparing to, to cycles. Uh, I'm not sure this one. Uh, oh. This one is cycles, and uh, this one is armory. So the lighting is still off, but uh, the reflections are kind of, kind of all right. And so how to improve this, improve this further is we need a solution for global il illumination. And that moves us to uh, part two, and that's about the render. And this is, um, I think this is my most favorite thing about Armory. But uh, yeah, like I said, the renderer is written from scratch um, because I wanted to keep it very, very small. And the less code, the better. So it will be easy to maintain going, for, going forward. And since it's kind of a specific renderer, like we ne I needed to build the same format that matches the basically what, what Blender gives. Yeah, so over the time there's now lots lots of nodes built in. But I picked five that I think are maybe the most important. Uh, those are basically draw world node, which if you insert this into the render path, you can uh, reference um, nodes from your world, world setup. What this means is if you drop in the sky node, it, will, it, should, it should just work. If you drop in environment texture, Armory will take it and generate pre-filtered maps. So again, it, it, should, it should just work. And you can actually, if you don't like the built-in shaders that transform the, these nodes, you can also um, rewrite the shaders, which, which one you want. You can also reference Compositor nodes. And uh, <coughs> reference all the lamp lamps in the scene. <laughs> and this way, it was also super easy to add new features, like uh, stereo rendering for visual reality, where, again, just a new node was added, and only the parts of the scene that made, made sense to render twice was put under the draw stereo node. So it is very easy to share the, for example, shadow maps or other data and do only work that you really need to. And uh, another easy addition was uh, Grease Pencil integration. <coughs> yeah, you can play the video. Uh, back. Yeah. Doesn't work. All oh, right, that doesn't matter. It's all right. <laughs> hey. Well, basically, you can uh, use the Grease Pencil data and uh, integrate it with, with the rest of the Armory feature, so it will run in the browser or all the other targets. Mm, you can also uh, 
insert the code into the render path. And uh, this way, for example, it was super easy to achieve effect like uh, dynamic resolution scaling, where if the frame time is getting too high for complex scenes, uh, we can lower the viewport resolution. And uh, it will look a bit worse, but it's better than uh, getting big uh, shot shattering. What I also think is that it's a great place to prototype new 3D rendering techniques because you don't need to care mostly about anything apart from shaders. You don't need to set up the render code for doing all of this. And uh, when you're doing this, you can easily replace the nodes and see what's wrong, what's happening when you connect them differently. And uh, another point that I think is quite nice is it's good for learning the high-level workings of the renderers because, again, you can uh, run it sideways with the nodes and uh, you can modify it and you will see the output what happens immediately. For example, if you, you disable, disable depth, depth clearing, and uh, you will see that the depth is wrong. And uh, this also allows to completely throw away the rasterizer and maybe, I don't know where, where that would happen, uh, jump to path tracing. Because there, there's no any ties to forward or different rendering. It's all dynamic. Mm, my experience with, with this was there was a great presentation about, about rendering in the new Doom when they did not use deferred renderer, but a forward renderer with thin G buffer. So basically, you render the scene as usual, but you only store normals and uh, depth. And uh, this way, I was able to prototype in uh, just a few hours. And for some scenes, it uh, actually turned out to be faster than different rendering. So when you are building a project, you can uh, experiment and see which one uh, is the best for your type of experience. Mm, by default, there's also a classic PBR node in included. So it is very easy to import um, PBR-ready assets. These are the mega scans. Um, these are, again, standard PBR textures. The, I think there are, there are only like three types of palms. And they are rendered over and over again with uh, Mm, geometry instancing. If you drop a node to a height connector, you can uh, very, very easily get tessellated displacement going on. It's, it's not laid, mm, it's not yet adaptive like in the latest six cycles. Uh, I think Blender. 2.78 is the latest. But eventually, I hope it will be also adaptive. Yeah. And uh, this is a hotel room bar, Pietro, who was um, very kind and shared this uh, model he was working on with me. And uh, it turned out quite, quite good, but the lighting under, under the table, it's still, it's, still, it's still quite, quite off. The shadows are a little bad over the bed. So to improve this, we need mm, better global illumination. 
Mm. So there are, there are two ways. There's offline solution where, since again, there's this big advantage of having cycles running uh, alongside, we can uh, render the probes using, using cycles and uh, pre-filter pre them and use them for uh, real-time rendering. This was uh, one of the tests, and you can actually see the red tint on the balls on the right and the blue tint on the balls on the left. But to make it fully, fully dynamic, uh, I started working on uh, voxel cone tra tracing. Oh, there's a video, but I'm probably won't work. Ah. Doesn't work. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> mm, it's, again, it's very simple right now. The scene is voxelized in a single pass, and uh, then the lighting is calculated. One more screenshot. And again, there is uh, n nothing pre baked. You can move all the objects change the materials, and the, the reflections are quite good. It's, it's not yet as good as I would like. And uh, the last part is uh, how we're going to deploy this and uh, run this. That's where uh, a technology named K comes in. It's uh, it's very, very small library, but it uh, gets rid of the, all the annoying stuff that we want to get. There are very, very little dependencies, um, and uh, no graphics API specific, so we don't touch any OpenGL code, any direct 3D code. Uh, this is all handled by K. And uh, my favorite part about K is that there is uh, no recompilation. So if you want to modify something in the engine, it's uh, like you would modify something in Python. You change a line of code, and you can immediately see the results. And this, I think, is quite important for contributing, because you very easily So yeah. As I uh, mentioned, by using hacks, we can uh, target any language, uh, like C++ for desktops and JavaScript for the web. And for performance critical code, we can still use um, C++ library to get away from graphics API, we use K, and uh, to not lean on any render technique, we use Armory. And uh, this is one of the demos you can uh, play online. It's uh, thanks to Kydros everywhere, and uh, it actually fits under one megabyte. And uh, yeah, it's almost done. <laughs> and really, this will be, I call it preview zero, because it's still it's still far from where I'd like to, but it will be out today. There are some documentation, but mm, really not much. And it may not work at all. Also, it will be paid for now, as I would like to keep it small and uh, uh, have time to support all the, all the problems, look into them properly. But uh, if anyone has ideas, how can I make it free, then uh, please get in touch with me. Yeah, there are some examples. And uh, that's it. Thank you. And. Uh,